Hi, my name is Sasha Stone, and I am playing in Twilight, written by Tobias Broadstrom. Twilight is a mallet quartet, which means there are four players. We play on two five-octave marimbas with the marimbas facing each other. So as I'm playing, I can see the other players around me. Each player has an additional instrument, which include a singing bowl, a bell tree, a suspended cymbal, a nipple gong, and wind chimes. So this piece is, starts out extremely delicate. We all have a first note together, and it goes to a single note on a marimba, which rolls, and one by one we add in, and it's very intimate. You have to be completely aware of what's going on around you, and it creates this bubble of you and these three other players. The musical lines ebb and flow in a very peaceful way, it's easy to get lost. It's easy to fall asleep to this music because it's so relaxing. It's such a release when we play this piece because we don't have to think about counting notes and counting rhythms. We count the rhythms, but it's, it's not do or die. It's I'm playing with this person and we're making music together. This piece requires us as players to communicate with each other. I look a lot at my other players. I make sure I'm breathing with them. This helps us line up our downbeats. We started working on this piece about two weeks ago, and I think it's coming along very nicely. We, we play well together. We anticipate what the other person needs. We generally do smaller chunks and then put the chunks together. For example, there's a, a line where I have the melody and We'll experiment with me going faster or slower or extending the phrase, shortening the phrase to make it very lyrical and very personal to each, each one of us. The reason we were able to put this piece together so quickly and get the notes down is because each of us has taken the time to go through and learn the notes. We write in the rhythms of other people's parts above our parts so we know who's moving at what point and where it's going next. This makes it easier to memorize as well as play it in a short amount of time without having to spend rehearsal time learning notes or learning rhythms. Each individual player takes, takes time outside of rehearsal and goes through their parts, listens to the recording, listens to the recording and plays their parts and that really helps to create the whole package without it taking weeks and weeks and weeks of time. Hello everybody, it's Carl again with South Coast Percussion Ensemble and I'm here to show you guys the steps that we took to create this wonderful instrument right here. So the first thing we had to do, figure out where we can find some large thick in diameter uh, pipes, PVC pipes. So we went, we just went to one of our local hardware stores and we found what we were looking for. The next thing we had to do is we had to figure out caps because we tried a couple of them. We found these ones and they're pretty simple and they seem to be pretty durable as well. It's very important to figure out the caps before you start actually cutting the pipes because you're going to want to make sure you know the difference between what the note is on the pipe when you have the cap on and when you have the cap off. It can raise the pitch slightly or lower it. So the next thing, figuring out you know, how, how can we get each of these to have an individual pitch, we have to sort of do a little bit of math. Here's the math that you have to do. You have to measure the pipe that you currently have, and you have to measure the sound with a tuner. So once you get those two uh, factors, the next step is really simply, what is the next pitch that you want? For instance, if we wanted C4, which is 261.63 hertz, we would just simply do that simple unit multiplier math problem, and we'd have a ratio of hertz to inches. The only thing that we'd have to find, since we already know the hertz for the C, is the amount of inches that the C pipe is going to be because we already have something that's already relative which is the amount of inches that whatever the other pipe is. So once you figure that out then you just you write down whatever amount of inches that was and you can use pretty much any kind of 
saw that'll cut through the pipe. So the next step after cutting it down to the size is you need to build the frame. So what we did was we just simply used a piece of plywood that I found in my backyard and then we used a little saw and we did like a circle. We cut circles into this plywood and then there you go, you got something to suspend the pipes into. As you can see, we put some rubber bands around here. Um, it doesn't have to be rubber bands, it basically just needs to be something that's going to keep the pipe from hitting the wood every time you um, play the note. Alright, so once again, this is a boobam. It's another perfect example of an instrument that we percussionists have to play and sometimes don't have and well we can either buy it off the internet like we buy so many other percussion instruments or we can make a homemade one so we made a homemade one <laughs>